What's up guys, GT here. So in case you haven't heard yet, AI or artificial intelligence is the next thing that everybody's been talking about. And ChatGPT is one of the online tools or the most popular tool in fact, which people are using a lot to in fact write stories, to write essays, had to even write code as well which is pretty awesome i saw one person using it to write a complete game using uh, just chat gpt and obviously it's searching you know results from the internet but the capabilities are just awesome so i wanted to try out and see what it can do for us guitar players this is going to be a fun video not any tutorials as such or any playing as such so grab a cup of coffee sit down with me let's ask some difficult questions to chat gpt and let's have some fun but before we begin it's time for the honorable mention of this video it's going to be Saad Shah I hope I pronounced your name right thank you so much for sending me a super thanks through YouTube in case you're wondering how you can support me check the links in the description box below for my PayPal or you can send me a direct contribution through YouTube as well in return I'll give you a shout out like this all right enough of that so let's get into the chat GPT tool and I'll show you what kind of questions I had prepared for it so as you can see, I've got chat GPT open in front of me. Full disclosure here, some of these questions I've already asked the tool. So it's already built up some sort of machine learning and capability to answer those questions already for me. So some of these questions might have already been answered and might be well answered in this particular video. But it's still going to be fun. Let's get into it and let's see what kind of questions we're going to ask. So I'm going to categorize the questions in kind of three categories uh, first one being facts we'll ask it some facts and see how it responds second one being sort of creative we'll try to see how creative it can get and in terms of solving our problems as guitar players and third i'm going to ask it some fun you know stuff as well because who doesn't like a bit of fun <laughs> so i'm not going to ask them in any order as such but i'll try and explain which one is more of a fun question which one is more of a fact question all right, this first question I want to ask is a sort of a fun question. I want to ask it, who has the best guitar tone? Now, what you'll see as an AI language model, I do not have personal preferences or biases. <laughs> the best guitar tone is a matter of personal taste and can vary depending on listeners' preferences and musical genre. Uh, however, it does go ahead and give us some answers as well. However, there are some guitarists who are often praised for the tone, such as Jimi Hendrix, Eric Clapton, Stevie Ray Vaughan, Eddie Van Halen, and BB King, to name a few. No mention of John Petrucci here, <laughs> but yeah, of course, it's this is a trend that you will see with the tool is that whenever you ask it opinion based answers, it's going to probably try and refrain to give you a specific name or an answer because that would be very, you know, biased towards a particular person or a player in this case. So that kind of answer also is OK. But some of the names that it churned out is pretty good. I mean, obviously, Van Halen had great tone. Eric Clapton had great tone. These are some of the legends that we know from the past who have kind of, you know, established what guitar tone in rock really is. All right, moving on to the next question. This one is sort of a fun and a factual question as well. So what I asked is, does better gear mean better guitar tone? So this is a question that we've always had from a long, long time, right? While having high quality gear can certainly help achieve a better guitar tone, it's important to remember that gear alone does not guarantee a great sound. Ultimately, the tone comes from the player's technique, musical style and personal preferences. This is awesome, right? Having better gear can provide a more versatile range of sounds, more control over the tone and higher quality recordings or live sound. However, it's possible to achieve a great tone with even basic gear if you have play good playing technique good tone control and an ear for what sounds good so the whole saying of tone is in the fingers right kind of is what it's saying as well so i firmly believe in this answer right i have great gear i've been blessed to be able to purchase great gear like the guitar the jp15 that you see in the background but you know i've seen guitar players who have amazing skill and have like a fender square you know and and absolutely shred on it they're absolute beasts and they're monsters of a player so pretty good answer i completely agree to it let me know in the comments what you guys think as well all right moving on to the next question does low guitar action mean bad tone <laughs> Let's see what it says. No, low guitar action does not necessarily mean bad tone. The action, which refers to the height of the strings above the fretboard, can affect the playability and feel of a guitar, but it does not necessarily have a direct impact on the tone. In fact, many guitarists prefer a low action because it can make the guitar easier to play and can facilitate faster playing. However, it goes on to say extremely low action can sometimes cause fret buzz or intonation issues, which can affect the tone negatively as well. So 
pretty good answer i would say again it knows the basic facts that yes uh, i'm a firm believer of this again like you know i play my action really really low on my guitar and i've been doing okay so far as you can tell from the channel i've been creating tones for a number of years now and i think low action is not directly proportional to the kind of tone you can get uh, obviously it really boils down to how clean and how precise your playing is i feel because when you have really low action i believe you do tend to get a lot of string buzz and a lot of noise and if you can tame that and have the right palm muting technique you can get amazing tone still so pretty good answer let's move on to the next one let me know in the comments what you guys think as well right this is going to be a fun one you guys are going to love this <laughs> Is the Axe FX3 better than the Axe FX2? <laughs> Again, an opinion-based question, so let's see what it says. As an AI language model, I cannot provide subjective opinion. We all know that. The Axe FX3 is a newer model and offers several improvements over the Axe FX2. Some of the key differences between the models include processing power, improved sound quality, enhanced I.O. options, more memory, improved user, improved, improved user interface, what am I talking? I can't speak properly. Improved user interface. Overall, the Axe FX3 offers several improvements over the Axe FX2, but whether it is better will depend on the individual's needs and preferences. Again, fantastic answer. I knew that it's kind of, you know, restrict from providing an opinion, but I'm still using the Axe FX2 and I firmly believe that it still rocks my socks off every day and it's amazing as a unit still in 2023. Let me know what you guys think in the comments as well. Who has the best Axe FX tone lessons on YouTube? <laughs> this is going to be fun. Let's see if, if my name even remotely pops up. As an AI language, I do not have personal preferences. Okay, obviously it's not going to give us a specific answer. A uh, good place to start would be to search for Axe FX tone lessons or Axe FX tutorials on YouTube and browse the results to find creators who specialize in this type of tone or genre. Uh, it doesn't give me any specific names, but if I try to regenerate the response, let's see what it does. It should give me some names. Obviously, it's going to tell us that it doesn't have any personal preferences. Here are some of the popular YouTube channels that offer Axe FX Tone lessons. Cooper, Carter, my man is already on there. It's amazing, amazing guitar player, amazing you know teacher. Do check out his channel if you haven't. Leon Todd, <laughs> of course, Leon Todd obviously is going to be there. He is well known and well established in the Axe FX realm and he's been doing so much for the community. Shout out to Leon for being so amazing. Thank you so much, Leon. Chop Tones, we all know, great presets and Fractal Audio itself, which is uh, the forums, is a beautiful resource for you to go tone hunting and find answers to relevant questions for the Axe FX2. I hang out there a lot as well. So pretty good answer. As you can see, if I try to regenerate the uh, answer, it does give a different answer at times as well. So pretty interesting. Let's move on to the next one. Again, a fun question. Let's see what it says. Is Fender better than Gibson? <laughs> Again, it's going to say I'm not going to provide you an opinion based answer, but Fender and Gibson are both iconic brands with a long history of producing high quality guitars and both brands have their unique strengths and characteristics. Fender is known for its classic designs, including the Stratocaster, Telecaster and Precision Bass. Fender guitars are often associated with bright, clean tones are popular in genres like blues, rock and country. Very, very correct. Gibson, on the other hand, is known for its Les Paul, SG and Flying V models, which are popular in genres like rock, blues and metal. Gibson guitars are often associated with warmer, more rounded tones. Fantastic answer. Ultimately, the choice, is between, uh, the choice between Fender and Gibson is down to personal taste, playing style and specific sound, etc, etc. We all know the answer to that, so it's not going to give you a specific answer. What do you guys think about this? Well, let me know. <laughs> Interesting question. Now, I'm going to ask it some uh, specific questions related to specific artists so let's see how it performs in that case how do i get joe satriani's guitar tone now joe satriani is a popular guitar player so it should have some sort of an answer to that it goes on to give me some a good amount of information about what i can use to get his tone this is amazing use the right gear joe satriani is known for playing ibanez guitar and he often uses the saturated distortion pedal and the vox time machine delay pedal 
However, gear is only one part of the equation and it's possible to get a similar tone with the other equipment as well. I believe, I remember the last time I asked it, it did mention about using humbuckers, which is also a very good answer in itself. Use a high gain distortion. The satiny stone often features high gain distortion with lots of sustain. Experiment with different distortion pedals and amp settings to find a sound that works for you. Use a compressor, use delay and reverb, use your fingers. Joe Satrian is known for his excellent technique and control over his instrument. This should be point one. In, as for me, you know, if you want to sound like somebody, you got to play like that person as well. So you got to first learn the technique. The sound for me comes later. Remember, while gear is important, tone ultimately comes down to the player's touch and technique. Experiment with different gear and techniques to find a sound that works for you and helps you express your musical voice. Amazing answer, I completely agree. Let's get some factual questions in there. What is drop C sharp tuning? Let's see what it does. Drop C sharp tuning is a guitar tuning in which the strings are tuned onto the following pitches from the lowest to highest C sharp, G sharp, C sharp, F sharp, A sharp, and D sharp. This tuning is one of the half step down from drop D tuning, which is a popular tuning for heavy metal and hard rock music. Drop C, drop C sharp tuning is used in heavy music genres such as metal, hardcore and progressive rock and can help to create a heavier, darker sound. The tuning is particularly popular amongst guitarists who use 7 string or 8 string guitars. Fairly good enough answer, I'd give it a A+. What do you guys think? Let me know. Another basic factual question, let's see what it does. How many amps does the XFX2 have? The XFX2 is a digital modeling guitar processor. Blah blah blah. It is capable of modeling wide ranges. Uh, Axifix has over 200 different virtual amps and effects, including classic tube amps, modern high gain amps, boutique amps, and even more. Each amp model can be customized in terms of EQ and other parameters. So it does give us good number. It does give a ballpark number. I believe the last time I asked it, it gave me a specific number as well. So pretty well uh, answered that one. Pretty good enough. Now I wanted to ask it to see if it can dial me a tone for me, right? I wanted to ask it, tell me the parameters to dial in a high gain Marshall guitar tone. Let's see what it does. Dialing in a high gain Marshall guitar tone involves adjusting a number of parameters on your amp, etc, etc. Gain. High gain Marshall amps are known for the overdriven distorted tones. Start by setting the gain control to a high level to achieve a heavy saturated tone. Base the bass control. Uh, try setting the bass control to around 8 or 9 on a scale of 1 to 10. Okay, that's slightly high for a heavy thick sound. Okay, it's saying that. Mid range, the mid range frequencies are important for shaping the body and character of your tone. For a classic Martian tone, set the mid range to around 5 or 6 on a scale of 1 to 10. So, yeah, it's going to give you that beefy mid range tone which we know you know Marshall is famous for treble 7 or 8 it's saying that's good enough presence 7 or 8 master volume the master volume can help to suggest the overall volume level of your amp or modeling processor for a high gain tone try setting the master volume to a high level to achieve maximum distortion okay, fair enough keep in mind that these settings are just starting point of this disclaimer it's going to add it in the end of every specific answer which is okay right but as you can see it kind of gives you a fair amount of idea as to where to start off with at least the other thing i want to talk about chat gpt is that it's contextual it kind of remembers what conversation you're having with it and it kind of remembers the last question you asked it so if i want to ask it what cab i should use for this tone it should remember what amp i was talking about from the previous question which is fantastic so i'm going to type in this question So what cabinet should I use for this tone? When it comes to choosing a cabinet for high gate Marshall tones, as you can see it remembers what I was talking about. Speaker size, cabinet type, speaker types, greenback Celestians, vintage V30s, 4x12, pretty awesome. It's also telling us vintage 30s and uh, G12 H75s and G12 T75s. Pretty awesome response. It knows what it's talking about. So I was fairly impressed with this answer. What do you guys think? Cabinet construction can also inspect the tone. A closed back cabinet will provide a tighter, more focused sound and a more with more low end, while an open back cabinet with uh, will have a more open, airy sound with less low end. It's pretty awesome, right? Mic placement. Finally, the way you place the mic in the cabinet will have a big impact on the tone. Experiment with different mic positions and distances to find a speed spot for your tone. It kind of remembered what I was talking about and this is what I like about ChatGPT. It's not like a basic Google thing. It kind of remembers what you're talking about and it has a more contextual approach towards the conversation, which is really good. Let's ask some more factual questions. Something basic like show me the tabs for a C major chord. Let's see what it does. Suddenly here is how to play a C major chord on guitar and it actually is tabbing out the 
guitar tab using text which is pretty awesome as you can see it's pointed out the strings from the high e to the low e and the notes seem absolutely correct and it did a great job obviously i don't know if it's going to handle very complicated chords well but this one looks pretty simple and and it looks pretty well done so kudos to chat gpt for this one this is pretty awesome all right next one oh the holy grail of the guitar tone questions let's see what it says to this one does the choice of wood really affect electric guitar tone <laughs> let's see the choice of wood used in electric guitar can have an impact on the tone but the extent to which this affects the sound is a subject of debate among guitarists and luthiers some argue that the type of used uh, wood used for the body, neck, and fretboard can have a significant of the guitar's overall tone. For example, some types of woods are known for their bright and cutting tone, while others are known for their warm and mellow sound. Common tone woods for the guitar bodies include alder, ash, mahogany, and maple, while rosewood and ebony and maple are often used for fretboards. However, others argue that impact of wood on the guitar tone is overblown and that other factors such as the pickups, hardware, and amplifier have a greater influence on the final sound. Again, it's not going to give you an opinion based answer. Last time I asked this question, it did give me a lot of different types of woods and what are the different types of tonal uh, differences that that particular wood brings. What I want to do is now get creative with it and see how well it can do stuff for me which I am having a hard time doing as a guitar player. So let's see if it can write me a song. I'm going to give it very little context. I'm going to say write me an emotional ballet style love song. Let's see what it does and what kind of an answer it gives me. All right, it's doing pretty much the gist of what I told you to do. It's writing a verse, it's writing a pre-chorus, chorus. It's thinking at the same time as well. It's pretty awesome. And it's a pretty long answer actually. It's written a bridge as well. It's written verse two. It's written a chorus. Uh, it's written an outro as well. Let's go through some of the lyrics now, now that it's finished. Okay, let's see. Verse one. Every time I close my eyes, I see your face and feel your touch. I can't help, I can't help but realize that I love you oh so much. Okay, it rhymes as well. You're the one that makes me whole. You're the one that fills my soul. Okay, that sounds a bit <laughs> wrong. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's good. I can't imagine life without you. I don't know what I would do. Okay, pretty well done. You're the reason I wake up every morning. The one I long to see. You're the one I want to spend my life with forever and for eternity. That's pretty awesome, I would say. I mean, it would take me a lot of time to come up with lyrics like this. This has done it in seconds. This is pretty awesome. Verse 2, I remember when we first met, it was like a dream come true. You swept me off my feet and I fell in love with you. That's pretty good. Alright, I want to change the context a bit. I am a huge metal listener, so let's see if it can write a metal song for us. Once again, I'm going to give it a little bit of context and I'm going to ask it to write a song. Write, uh, I'm not going to give it a context about writing a song. I'm just going to say, how about a heavy metal song about world politics? Let's see what it does. So it obviously knows that I asked it to write a song, so it's now going to answer with a heavy metal sort of a song. It's pretty awesome, it's writing. The world is in chaos, there's conflict everywhere, politicians spewing lies, innocent lives are left in despair. That's pretty awesome. We are drowning in a sea of hate as the powers that dictate. It's writing too much, I need to wait for it to finish. It's doing a pretty good job, I would say, in such a short span of time. So yeah, verse one, we already read. Pre-chorus, we are drowning in a sea of hate as the powers that be dictate. We need a revolution to break the chain and put an end to all the pain. World politics, a game of deceit where the few hold all the power. We need to rise up and take a stand and fight for a brighter hour. Pretty impressive, I would say. Money rules the world and greed fuels the fire. The rich get richer while the poor just expire. <laughs> wow. <laughs> We're caught in a cycle of greed where those in power do as they please. So it's doing a fantastic job, I would say. You know, I wouldn't come up with so many lyrics in hours and hours. I'm pretty sure it's not simple to write a song, but it's done that for me in seconds. I cannot be more happy with the results that I've got. Obviously, it's not maybe not exactly fitting to the needs that you want but it gives you a starting point and you can tweak from there and go from there right so it's pretty awesome when it comes to even writing basic lyrics for you now i did go ahead and ask it some more questions as well and i pre-recorded this before this video so that you can see the answers that i got 
because it's going to change the next time I ask it. What chords should I use in this song? Here are some of the chord progressions you could use for the two songs. So since I asked it to write two songs for me, it's going to give me the chord progressions for two songs. For the emotional ballad style love song, you can use the chords verse C, G, A minor, F, chorus, F, G, C and A minor. So pretty much the standard chords for a ballet song that you would see it out there. For the heavy metal song about world politics, you could use the verse as E minor, C, G and D, which is the standard chord that you would pretty much use in a metal sort of a song. Of course, you can always experiment with different chord progressions and find out what sounds best to you. Good luck with your sound writing. <laughs> now, I went ahead and said that I want the heavy metal song to be a bit darker in chords. So, sure, sure, here are some of the alternate chord progressions for the heavy metal song with a darker feel. So, it's going to give me a different set of chord progressions now. So, you're saying I can use B minor, G, D and A now, but that's not still dark enough for me so what I said is how about more darker chords so it's respond it's responded saying certainly here are here's a darker chord progression for heavy metal song verse B flat minor a flat F minor and D flat okay now it's kind of changing the stuff it's still following that minor major start of a routine but it's still adding another minor here which is a F minor which is pretty good I think I did not try these chords out but it sounds like it's gonna sound a little more darker compared to the ones it you know gave me before this progression uses minor chords which are often which often evoke a darker mood again remember that you can experiment with different voicings and etc etc can you write a guitar riff for this song? This was amazing. I asked it whether it could write a guitar riff for me and it actually came up with some tabs as well. Now, the tabs here are pretty <laughs> not readable much because it's using text to depict the chords, but it's still churning out some chords, which is awesome. I tried these chords out. They are not playable. They don't sound like anything like a heavy metal song. So it's saying four, two, four and two, three. And then these are two power chords. I believe this is a B power chord. And then it's again doing the same thing, repeating itself. For the chorus riff, it's just transposed the same thing two steps forward and given me the same chords again. But it's trying to do something, right? It's it's a good start as Type GPT is growing and it's becoming bigger and bigger. It's gonna obviously get more advanced and it, it's gonna do a lot of things which I think it's gonna be really fantastic. Can you provide an audio example of this riff is what I asked it last and as an AI language model I don't have the ability to create audio samples however I can recommend using a digital audio workstation or a guitar recording software to control to record the riff and play it back. This is awesome right so obviously it's not going to give you an audio sample of how the riff is going to sound like but at least it's telling you that go ahead and use a DAW <laughs> and record this and you can hear back what you're playing. It goes on to say there are also many guitar cover videos on YouTube that can give you an idea of how the riff should sound. That's pretty weird because <laughs> bro you just wrote me a song. You just gave me the riff yourself. How you're saying they're covered for this on YouTube. So that's pretty uh, random. I wouldn't say that's a pretty factual thing to say. But at least it's giving you a response. That's what really matters. I really enjoyed asking some of these questions to the ChatGPT tool. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. If you have any tricky questions, ChatGPT is free. You can register. Anybody can use a Google or a social login to log in there and start chatting with it. Ask it some difficult questions. See what you want to ask it. I've tried asking it various keys and various chords and it seems to know what it's talking about. But it's still evolving a lot and I think they are releasing new versions almost every week or something like that. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and in case you haven't liked it so far, please go ahead and do that. I had a good time. Hope you guys had one too. And in case you aren't subscribed, please go ahead and do that. I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, make sure you stay safe. Keep rocking guys. Cheers. Bye bye.